Uh, second day today, so yesterday we eased into a bit of uh, testing for, for the physios and then first day out on the field with the boys, but um, from what we've seen on the training footage and stuff, the boys have been going really well, so we want to try and fit back in as smoothly as we can, so we're looking forward to it. Obviously a tough World Cup for everyone involved in the, the Wallabies camp, did you guys have to get away to try and move on from that or anything? I think that's important. Um, obviously, it's a new year now, so um, you can't change the past. So we sort of have to move past that. And I guess for both me and La, the best thing we can do is put our best foot forward for the Tars. So we're just excited to, you know, start potentially playing trials and then get into the footy season and, and work hard with the guys that have already set a great platform. Did the disappointment for the World Cup stay with you for a little while? Like, does, it, does it linger? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so. On your point about getting away. Yeah, definitely. Um, had a good break there and yeah, it lingered around for a while and you kind of, you know, you see people you haven't seen for a while and they want to hear about it and, and talk about it and it was hard because not by fault or, or not by effort that we um, didn't go as well as we wanted and it was a poor, poor World Cup from us. So, um, yeah, it, it lingers. It, it's probably still lingering a little bit, um, but it's good we get out there today and we get to, um, to run around with, with the boys. There's been a lot of commentary around not just hurting the Wallabies sort of brand, but also it can sort of scar the players. How are you guys feeling? Like, you, you, can you move on pretty easily from what you, or you want to get back on the paddock and redeem yourselves? Or what's the feeling there? Yeah, definitely. Look, um, hopefully we get the opportunity to sort of um, to play for the Wallabies again, both me and La, we'd love to, and obviously we'll do our, everything in our power to do so, but um, we have a job with the Waratahs first, and um, the good thing is, is that you know, we, potentially there is opportunities there for Australian rugby to to redeem a bit of that respect back that we lost at the World Cup. So, um, yeah, you, you can't in professional sport you can't hang on to things for too long. Um, I guess things move into the past, and we've just got to focus on the future. So, we're excited for next year. Took a few soft things missing twenty three with our time. Do you feel like particularly at state level you got a point for it? not a point for it, but really sort of give back to DC and this club after missing. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's been about, I think, a year and six months since I've last actually trained at the Tars, so or done anything here at the Waratahs, so it's, um, it's been a long time and I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with some of my best mates, obviously growing up playing with a lot of these lads, so um, no, it's really exciting times and um, obviously we've got a really exciting group of boys, so uh, we're hoping to put it all together and you know get the performances that the Australian public and also all the New South Wales fans want. There's been a bit of chaos off the field as well with Eddie going, and, you know, also Hamish as well. Do, do you worry about the state of rugby at the moment? No, not at all. Yeah, again, again, we're around quality all the time, so we can understand that there's, there's quality at the Waratahs, there's quality all through Australia um, of rugby players and, and also staff. So um, we can only look forward, as I said before, that um, we can only look forward to next year and, and, and that's for people... Um, higher than us to decide who um, the next coach of the Wallabies will be, but um, no, it's, it, again, it's exciting. We're heading into an exciting time for rugby for Australia, so um, no, it's, ex it's exciting times, but um, yeah, we just have to worry about what we need to do, and that's here at the Waratahs first. And he's accepted that he took a punt on you for the World Cup and that he's looking to build for 2027. Is there any element of disappointment or that he's left after doing that, or happy to see him off? I was personally disappointed. Um, I really liked Eddie. I felt like he got the best out of me as an individual and a player. Um, I really enjoyed being under him and being coached by him um, and, and also the rest of the staff as well um, yeah, with Hats, um, the scrum coach and forwards coach. So, um, yeah, it is disappointing seeing them go because um, they are quality coaches and we can see in parts there that you know we are a great team but we weren't able to put it together for 80 minutes at all. So. Um, no, it is disappointing to see them go, but as I said, you can't change the future, so we just have to deal with what is now, and as rugby players, that's putting our best foot forward to the Waratahs. You guys have been coached by Dave Rennie and New Zealander and Eddie in Australia. Did you see any differences in terms of how um, coaching styles, what might be better for this group going forward? There's obviously the talk around who's going to be a foreign coach or an Australian coach. Do you think that's... No, I don't think so. I think... Um, they make decisions and they coach how they coach and, and there's, a, there's a reason why they're two of the best coaches in the world. So, um, are they different? Yes. And 
in good ways, I think. So they're, they're both awesome coaches. And um, look, we don't decide that and we can't control that. So there's no point worrying about who the coach will be. It's, I've always thought if you play good footy, then the rest will take care of itself. So um, yeah, if it's a foreigner or, or a um, Australian, then I'm sure they, they're coming here to do do the right thing, and that's to put Australian rugby back where it belongs. And without having uh, director of high performance here or all of his coaches, they're a bit of unknown around. Um, you guys have the future sorted, but do you feel like other guys that don't, that kind of leaves everyone a little bit in limbo? Uh, is that something that you think needs to be sorted really quickly so that um, the whole playing group feels a bit more confident going forward? Um, I think it's an element of life, I guess. If you're working a job and the CEO gets sacked, then you don't you know, have much certainty either. So it's um, it's a thing that just happens in life. And, and we know that you know coaches turn over, things happen, and, and people change roles. So um, for us and for the boys that are you know, potentially coming off contract or heading into those sort of grey areas, um, it's just about training and playing the best they can, uh, impressing the Waratahs coaches, and, and then um, going from there, I guess, with, with who gets appointed, which will be, I'm guessing, pretty soon. And from a Super Rugby perspective, a lot of a lot of the franchises have been struggled against the Kiwis, um, and that's clearly the, the benchmark at the moment. Do you feel like there's a correlation between not having that success at Super level and that, that transferring to a, a national level? And, uh, you know, yeah, how important is it for you guys as the Tars, as, as Super franchises, to get back to winning and, and making sure it's not just 50-50, but you know, much more? Yeah, it's massive. Like obviously speaks for itself, the results and stuff like that, and then you lead into TRCs and Bledisloe's, and we obviously haven't got over the Kiwis for the last few years or, you know, for a long time, so we need that to change, and I think um, for, for Australian rugby and for the Wallabies to do well, we have to do well here at Super Rugby, not just at the Waratahs, but all the franchises, so, um, and it will give us a lot of confidence in whoever puts on that jersey, you know, that they know that they can mix it with, obviously, the Kiwis are um, amongst the best in the world. So, um, yeah, it needs to change and it, and it has to change pretty quickly because um, if you keep this trend and, and the way that we're going in Super Rugby where we just, we're there, we're almost there, but we don't quite get there um, against the Kiwis, then this is probably going to keep going for a long time until something clicks and changes, so we need to make that. See a host of the All Blacks head overseas in 2024. Your likes of the War Warriors and Aaron Smith is the best chance for the Australian Super Rugby clubs to really sort of turn that tide to get, get it over the Kiwi Cup Yeah, it's it's awesome for them and and um, and what they're doing. But you're obviously playing rugby because you want to play the best and and to be the best, you got to play the best. So whilst it's I guess it's a good opportunity for Australian rugby teams to get one over the Kiwis. You know, I feel like. If, even if we do win and then they're not playing, you know, people will say, oh, but they don't have those players. So I don't think we're ever going to quite get to that point where people start believing it and recognising unless we play the best players from, from New Zealand. So um, it's great that they're doing it and hopefully we can show this year that, um, you know, we're going to go really well. And it's, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the Tim Lauren gave you a big rap and said he thinks you could be a future Wally's captain. Firstly, how nice is it to hear that from him? And secondly, as under a new coach and a new era, is it a role that, that you'd like to have one day? Um, yeah, definitely. I've always aspired to be a leader. Um, that's completely up to the decision of the of the new head coach. Um, I've got to make the Wallabies first. I've got to make the Waratahs first. Plenty of good blokes and, and great footballers running around. So, um, yeah, my focus is the Waratahs. My focus is, you know, making the team and playing the best rugby, making the Tars as successful as possible. And I think through actions on the field and, and whatever else happens, it's um, that decision is then made by the head coach. But yeah, it was um, it was awesome to hear Timmy say that. Um, you know, he's a legend. He's a legend of Australian rugby and has been you know hyper successful also as a Wallaby. So um, no, it was awesome to hear and um, I really appreciate his comments. Angus, does anyone out there at the World Cup could deter some guys from staying in the code um, in the next few years? There's been talks of guys wanting out. Um, Look, it's definitely not good. I don't. I wouldn't say it would be good, but um, again, it's Australia rugby's got a, a pretty good foundation, I believe, in you know the the schooling system and and also um, throughout Sydney for where I grew up. So, no, I don't think people will lose interest. Um, the World Cup wasn't 
uh, good and as we know we, we weren't good enough there and, uh, and that's not going to be a good thing it's never going to be a positive but I believe there's plenty of kids coming through the system that can aspire to be Wallabies and, and who want to play for the, for the Wallabies. Mark, I had a meeting with the Roosters, have you put your big arm around him and said stick around and stay around him? That's, that's completely up to, to Marky and, and what he does but um, no, we, again, me and La and, and the other Wallabies, the returning, we sort of just, during these times and especially, you know, when we're not playing, we're in the pre-season, we're in a bit of a grind, we just try and concentrate on becoming better and, and better rugby players. But again, that's a decision for Marky to make and whatever's his decision is his decision. Just lastly for me, given what the playing group sacrificed this year for the Wallabies, how do you think that playing group would react if Eddie was appointed Japan coach? Yeah, I Look, we don't make his decisions for him, and it's a business, um, like I said. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, and if it does, and it does, and it'll be, it would, I think it would hurt a little bit, um, just because I guess all the chat around, all that kind of stuff before and, and stuff like that. But um, again, what he did for us at the World Cup and, and, and leading up to that, um, you can't fold his effort and his and is driving to want to make Australian rugby better. So, again, um, we really respected him and, and, and respect him. So, I guess um, if that happens, then uh, good on him. So, if you're, you're aware of the chat, did that sort of distract you guys all during the campaign, that talk about yeah. any potential leave? Not really. Um, it's, again, there's plenty of always media, there's always, you know, the articles that are released that aren't positive or, or have a negative impact on people. Um, I guess we had bigger fish to fry in the competition. We had a World Cup in front of us, and something that happens every so often, every four years. So no, I don't think it didn't affect it at all. And um, we knew Eddie was committed with how much he was doing behind the scenes and, and what he was doing for the group. So again, as Lars said, and I'll reiterate it, it's he, he did everything that he possibly could have done for the group and, and tried to get us forward. But um, at the end of the day, it wasn't good enough, and that's on the players on the field too. So. Um, no, I don't think it'll, it, it's just like someone else working for another company. It's just how it works. Well, I'm sure you guys have hoped it pulls you guys together. But do you think it will? Like, knowing that there's a World Cup here in four years' time, you didn't play knock out rugby there, do you think it could actually bring you guys closer together? Or, have you discussed it with any of them? Oh, well, I haven't, to be honest. I've been on break, so yeah. this is my second day in at the moment. And um, to be honest, I was, I'm a bit nervous going out there and running around, so. To think about four years is a long way away, and I'm just going to go train and worry about that before I um, think about trying to play knockoff games in, in the World Cup. Do you feel fresh coming back? Was that a big year? Yeah, I do. Um, needed it mentally and physically, and um, yeah, it's awesome to come back in and and um, and get going. But yeah, I definitely feel refreshed and, and ready to go for sure. From a world class perspective, does it feel like it was almost unfinished business from last year? You know, off, I guess, the start of this year, two sort of quarter final exits in very similar fashion. Yep, definitely. Um, we want to go. We want to go further, and um, we're not really talking about how far we can go. We're kind of just putting things in place at training and trying to work harder because obviously what we've done in the last two years hasn't um, hasn't come up to scratch. So. Um, the, the coaching staff here have been re working really hard and you can tell when the bo when we came back the boys are in good nick and, and training hard so um, yeah I'm excited for what 2024 has in store for us. What can it do by coming in so much earlier in the pre-season than usual? Sorry what was what, that? What can it do for you guys and as a team coming in so much earlier to all these guys into the pre-season a month before Christmas? Really? Probably get a bit more athletic development than we usually do coming in before Christmas, obviously stuff is put in place, we, we have testing, we have things, we have goals that we need to hit. And, um, so no, it's just I guess an early start to, to what will be a big year um, and, and a long pre-season, so um, it's all positive from, from us, we've got a really good SNC team and, and coaching staff, so that'll push us in the right direction and push us hard, so we're looking forward to that.